Hi, I'm Ed Johnson with Sandy's Voice Online, and today we're here with Lana Popham, who is, um, we're in the middle of an election, uh, and Lana is running for Senate South, is it? That's right. And, um, and there's, what, 18 days left to go, so I'm, thank you for taking the time. <laughs> I know your time's pretty precious right now. Well, it's, it's a thrill to, to come and talk to you about agriculture. It's like a reprieve from the campaign, yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. I understand you're, you're a farmer yourself, and what do you do on your property? Uh, uh, my family uh, has a farm on Old West Saanich Road, and we have a vineyard, a two-acre vineyard. It was the first certified organic vineyard on Vancouver Island. We're currently not certified because I was the farmer, and <laughs> since I've left home for the last four years to <laughs> jump into the the political ring, uh, there's a lot that we used to do on our farm that we're not doing, but it's waiting for me to come back. Mm -hmm. So we all, mm -hmm. I used to have a, a successful vegetable business. Well, hopefully you won't come back in a few months. <laughs> well, I, you know, I farmed with a lot of um, the great farmers in this area for a decade, and I told them I was just going in to fix things, and I'm coming back out to join them again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, I think that's my long-term yeah. plan. <laughs> yeah. Now, the NDP recently uh, uh, released their agricultural program, and there were three points, I think, if you yeah. could tell us what they were. Oh, yeah, and it's so exciting. I have to tell you, I've been working as the ag critic for four years, and um, because my passion is our, our food system in BC. And uh, I was flying up to um, Kelowna one day, and I was on the plane, and I'm very afraid of flying. And I was trying to make notes and, and focus on agricultural policy to take my mind off of the flight. And uh, I, I came up with the three points of our plan because I thought it communicated a really good long-term vision for, for BC agriculture. So the three-point plan is grow BC, feed BC, and buy BC. And uh, you know, I've been in my position for four years. I've dealt with four different agriculture ministers. The agriculture ministry mm -hmm. is much like a stepping stone ministry, I believe, for, mm -hmm. for people who are aspiring to, to move up higher in, in politics. And for me, there's nothing better than the agriculture ministry. So it's been very difficult to find consistency uh, and stability for me, even being the critic, um, of the ministry because of every time a new minister comes on the scene I have to re-educate him to what my direction is him or her and uh, For farmers dealing with a minister. It's exactly the same thing. So there's provincially There's an enormous frustration with the way the agriculture ministry gets handled and um, You know, we've always been able to say uh, for years that we have the lowest support in Canada of any agriculture ministry. Now the thing is about agriculture, it doesn't need to have a ton of money thrown at it, it just needs to have really successful policies that support agriculture and incent farming. And so the Grow BC part of the platform is really everything that um, pertains to that. So this would be something like um, proper meat regulations for the province. Uh, having a replant money for the orchards in Kelowna, um, addressing the uh, support for the Agricultural Land Commission and making sure they're able to fulfill their mandate, which they haven't been for quite some time. Their mandate is two-part. It's to protect our agricultural land for fr future food growing, but it also is supposed to be encouraging farming, and um, uh, they haven't been able to do that. And so in this area, for example, we've seen uh, the issue of fill dumping on agricultural land. That's something that they didn't have the resources to try and control. And so that's something that we would support. I've personally called for a provincial fill dumping strategy on agricultural land. And uh, although you won't see that in the platform, that's, a, that's something I'll be working on um, if I'm still connected to the agriculture <laughs> ministry after this election. Uh, so those sorts of... Um, supports are critically important. Another thing that we're going to bring back into the ministry is extension services and field services. So these are agents within the ministry that you can call up and talk about problems you mm -hmm. are planning uh, around agriculture. I remember in um, uh, when I was farming, 
I could call the ministry and an agent would actually come to my farm in person to talk about the it's situation. Like if you found a bug that you didn't know what it was? If you're having, yeah, if you're having mm -hmm. disease problems or, or pest mm -hmm. problems or even just talk about crop planning, uh, mm -hmm. there was a lot of agrologists available so that mm -hmm. they can look at the, the base uh, mm -hmm. of soil that you have and suggest different crops that mm -hmm. you might be able to grow. Uh, and, and that's really been gutted over the last decade and I would say universally that's something that farmers want back all around the province. Another issue uh, that I've heard a lot about is around our honeybees. Um, the honeybee community all around the province wishes to have more inspectors in place to keep track of disease because as we know we're we are uh, facing some very um, big problems around our pollinators and the decline of our honeybee population. So that sort of thing would fall under Grow BC and there's a lot of work to be done uh, and there's lots of opportunities and a lot of them don't cost a lot of money mm -hmm. but it, it needs to um, portray the, the vision, the long-term vision and support. Um, one simple thing that can be done under Grow BC is to bring back the Standing Committee on Agriculture back into the legislature. This was a committee that worked up until 2001 and then it was disbanded by the BC Liberals and I think it was a huge mistake because if you're not going to financially support the ministry, at least you could have the community inside the legislature, all the stakeholder groups coming up with directions that they think would work because I think that's where you get your best solutions. So those are things that would fall under Grow BC. The next part of the plan is called Feed BC, and I think this is probably one of the biggest policy shifts that we've seen in agriculture for a long, long time. Uh, it deals with procurement contracts and our health authorities. So uh, our policy would require health authorities to buy more BC grown food. Uh, if we were elected, we would want to see that increase of 5% uh, right away and then over a four-year term we'd like to move that up to 30 percent so that's a big mm -hmm. policy shift can I interject right there yes. on that one uh, because uh, with the trade agreements that the federal government is signing mm -hmm. something like that might run into some roadblocks because it uh, you know foreign interests might say well that's not fair mm -hmm. and uh, we deserve it chance to. Right, and so the trade agreement conversation has been a big part of what we've looked into and you actually, um, if you're dealing with health authorities, uh, you're able to do uh, local procurement like that. Mm -hmm. There's other reasons that you can do it. You can do it for emergency preparedness, you can do it for climate change reasons, and uh, these are the reasons why we would be pushing that policy forward, all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. We think that it's part of a, a plan for resiliency for our province to make sure we have food production as other jurisdictions may uh, see challenges because of climate change. We may not always have access to the markets that we're mm -hmm. buying from now, and so having more production in our province is critically important. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that unless you're incenting agriculture. And I think the direction of the current government has been focusing on the international market as far as exports go. And that's fair. Uh, I have nothing, uh, no problem with that. But I do have a problem with abandoning our domestic market, and I think that's what's happened. So um, it's almost like building a fancy house without a foundation. Mm -hmm. So we're we're uh, committed to building that domestic market. Now, if you, it, I always say it's an enormous policy shift, and I'll give you an example of why. The southwestern bioregion of BC, which doesn't actually include Vancouver Island, we're in a different area, but it would include the Lower Mainland, the Sunshine Coast, the Fraser Valley. There's four different health authorities there. Mm -hmm. They spend $50 million a year on food for their hospital systems and their long-term care. $50 million, so that's just one bioregion of BC. If we did 30% of that business in BC, for one thing, we could probably not even do that right now. We wouldn't be producing enough to fulfill that. But if we did, that is a uh, very stable market. And what you'd see is you'd incent more farming and you'd incent more processing. Um, our leader, Adrian Dix, on his leadership um, tour was often heard saying, wouldn't it be great to find a BC apple in a BC hospital? You know, up in the Okanagan, he was, he was talking about that a lot. Now, not everybody in a hospital can eat a, an apple, but they can certainly eat applesauce and that's an incentive to bring back our processing uh, of agricultural products. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, people are very pleased about that. Uh, it also addresses some of the problems that we've seen, for example, with the meat regulations. Um, 
we've seen different classes of licenses be established over the last eight years. There's been a constant moving of goalposts as far as the, the processing business. And so people have walked away from meat processing a lot, especially you see that on the Saanich Peninsula. We don't have our own abattoir here. Um, and so uh, bringing the stability back there, if hospitals were to buy meat from BC, it would have to be through an ARB licensed facility. So these are the government inspected agencies. Now, that would sort of take the pressure off and um, the conflict away between farm gate sales and that type of processing. I think there's room for everybody and we'd like to give everybody an opportunity to, to be in the marketplace. I think consumers have a right to choose what they want to eat mm -hmm. and a policy like this will open that up for them, I think. The final part of our plan is by BC, and that's a provincial-wide marketing program. And uh, we saw the NDP bring this in in the 90s, and it was one of the most successful marketing uh, programs for agriculture that we've ever seen. Now, unfortunately, it was cut for partisan reasons, even though it was successful, and the money that was invested in it was excellent value. Uh, we're committing $1.5 million a year for that. Um, the Liberal government has tried to bring back BIBC in every form that it can think of except BIBC. So they have different types of marketing programs, including using Facebook. But um, when the Agriculture Minister um, announced that Facebook was one of the ways they were going to connect with consumers, I immediately went on Facebook and joined their page. And I still think that it's probably only at about 200 people. So I don't think it's doing the job. Um, I think anyone in business knows that if you're going to do a marketing program, it has to be consistent and it has to include everybody for it to work. And our BIBC program would do that. But we're going to expand that to not just agricultural products, but we'd like to see um, a BIBC program for all products made in British Columbia. What is your, uh, in your or the NDP stand on GMO for this BIBC program? Okay, well that's a great question. So um, in the Okanagan, there's an application right now to bring in a genetically modified apple tree to be planted in the orchards there. The orchardists are adamant that this would be a, a really big mistake for their area. These are conventional growers and organic growers. They think that the threat to their uh, economy there would be huge if um, there was any indication that the GMO apple could uh, harm their, their, the purity of their product, the, purity, the reputation of purity. And so uh, it's a federal jurisdiction, but my belief and, and uh, the NDP believe that it's our, it's, we have to stand up for British Columbia even under federal jurisdiction. So we sent the message loud and clear uh, in the last session that we don't want it. We don't want that apple tree being approved in British Columbia. We think it's a risk to our economic development. Uh, we would see areas not um, uh, requesting our apples anymore. So shipping to Europe, they've got very strong views on GMO products, and those markets would be shut down for us. So we've, we've stood up, we, can't, we don't have a policy against it, but we would fight hard against the federal government. I've also said that we believe in truth in labeling, and we do. Um, the federal NDP has put forward a motion, I think maybe nine times, asking for labeling of GMO products, and we support that, and we would be working as hard as we can to, to, be, to uh, join with them in that fight. You know, you've seen some very interesting things happen with GMOs over the last little while. One of the examples is Whole Foods now is requiring labeling on their products if there's GMO uh, ingredients. Consumers have an enormous amount of power. And I believe if there's truth in labeling and people are aware of what they're eating, they'll make the choices and that'll drive the market and drive the, the direction of the way products are being produced. Um, there, here on the peninsula, I know there's sort of a schism between um, organic growers and conventional growers, and many of the conventional growers see nothing wrong with GMO, whereas the organic people are totally against it. Um, so, um, and, and you were talking about mostly the Okanagan, so how does that fit into the local agriculture? I mean, how can they both exist? Although, I know recently the uh, the Association of Municipalities on, of the Coastal Region mm -hmm. have all voted against GMOs, so mm -hmm. the tide is turning. That's it is, sure. yes, and I think you don't, um, if you're a conventional grower, you're not necessarily using uh, GM seed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you can still uh, avoid that. Uh, 
I think farmers are pretty aware and they're, and they're business people. So if there's a consumer demand for a certain product, you, you've seen mm -hmm. in the way that consumers are, are demanding to know what's in their food and, and where it's coming from and how it's being grown. I think you've seen a shift in the way that people are, are farming. Mm -hmm. But, you know, pitting agriculture, uh, farmers against farmers is, n is never the way to go. We need to stand together to, in order to make uh, a proper food system in British Columbia. And there's probably a place for everybody, but I think the consumers have the ability to drive mm -hmm. that and you see that happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now if I may play the devil's advocate for a moment, sure. um, I remember mm -hmm. Corky Evans in the last um, NDP government uh, reeling against the lack of funding and support for agriculture and which has continued till today I mm -hmm. suppose and uh, but so are we to believe the NDP this time, or what has changed to make, because even the Liberals are talking supporting agriculture, so I'm wondering uh, what has changed uh, in your mind that uh, this will be a reality this time around? Uh, well, the NDP's committed $24 million more dollars over three years to agriculture, and with our plan, uh, our three-point plan, I think it, it's committing to a long-term vision. Uh, when you make policy change in agriculture as big as the procurement contract, it's, it can't happen overnight. It's like turning a giant ship around. Um, you, ne you need to have stability. And agriculture is different than, than other ministries in that way because, you know, it, it takes long-term planning, uh, crop planning, uh, production planning. Um, it's not something that you can just snap your fingers and change a policy and all of a sudden agriculture is successful. Corky Evans was right about so many things. I still have great conversations with Corky, and uh, he supports this plan. He thinks it is a long-term vision. Um, I think mostly because it's considering agriculture as a whole system in BC. So it's looking at all different uh, jurisdictions. We're focusing on health authorities only because it's easy to break up, uh, break the province up that way. But it takes into account everything that we can produce here. Quirky was famous for saying, um, especially about the agricultural land reserve, which we proudly brought in, that it protected the land, but it didn't protect the farmer. And so the policies that we're putting forward, I think, are very supportive of the business of agriculture mm -hmm. while supporting the land base. Well, the problem with farming now, as you well know, is the price mm -hmm. of land. And you're an old, say you're an old farmer, you have nobody to pass the farm down to, and, but you want your retirement funds out of that yeah. farm. And so you're asking a price that really nobody can make any money farming. What are we going to do about that? Is there a, in the plans for a, a levy to, uh, like the parks fund on our property taxes, to uh, try to uh, develop a fund to buy some of these properties or mm -hmm. offset their costs? There's been, so I travel around the province a lot and that comes up a lot, the idea of a, uh, an agricultural land bank mm -hmm. system. Uh, we don't have a specific policy on that, but there's a lot of things that, that we're open to talking about. But, you know, to be, to be clear about why, why are farm prices so high, one of the reasons is because the Land Commission basically is, has been a commission for applications for exclusions and development. So we've got the message out there right now that the highest and best use for the ALR is housing development and development. Mm -hmm. And we have to take that message away. And so um, there are steps that, that the commission is taking around um, not being able to keep reapplying to have land excluded. You have to wait five years before you put another application in. Uh, there's also other ideas that are floating about. So if you purchase a piece of agricultural land, perhaps you shouldn't be able to put an application at, in at all for development for 10 years. All of a sudden, the value of that land changes. And all of a sudden, maybe the highest and best use is for agriculture. You'll see the land prices fall down, I believe, if we stick to that. Um, but as far as young people getting onto the land, I've heard talk, uh, a lot of people talk about the province being um, involved in long-term leases for agricultural land, maybe giving a tax break for that. All ideas that are worthy of investigating, and uh, I'm committed to doing that, and our party is too. Adrian, um, up in... on. I recently went up to make the agricultural announcement with him and I, I was on the leader's tour bus and it, it was exciting and and um, to see his excitement about bringing agriculture, uh, bringing up the profile of agriculture in uh, this election, it I, I couldn't have felt more proud and when I saw the signs come out when we arrived on the bus, people holding signs on the side of the road that said, um, buy, grow, feed, BC, it was just, for me it was, 
I felt like we, we had raised the profile. It's, I don't think it's ever had this type of profile over many election cycles. Now the Liberals are also trying to raise that profile, but I think we've been hammering it so hard over the last four years, they really had no choice. And you know what, that's a success. If mm -hmm. every party can raise the profile of agriculture at this point, that's success for agriculture. We're very lucky on the South Island to have the engagement we have uh, around local food. And you see the uh, restaurant uh, relationship with agriculture here, it's really helped keep um, agriculture on the map. So when I leave the South Island I, and go into other areas of the province, I always think that we're the ones that kind of know, know how to do it. But there is areas all around BC that are doing so many great things. You know, I'll land in a place like 100 Mile House and they've got an agricultural group there that's plugging away on the same things that we're working on. So there's an appetite in, in every corner of the province to, to highlight our local food. People really are interested in our food system. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, there, there's been an awakening around that. And so um, I don't think that I could have uh, had any more, had more success at a different time. This is, this feels to me like it's the time for us to, to move forward on it because um, politicians have more open minds and the consumers do too. Mm -hmm. Also, as my position as chair of Farmland Trust, we sent our wish list to uh, the um, NDP people, and uh, one of the things that um, we had talked about was uh, training for new farmers, right. how, how if there could be some sort of, as we put it, uh, implementing targeted skills and development initiative to mm -hmm. um, train these young farmers who, as far as I know, in colleges there's very few programs to teach farmers and really they can learn a lot better and faster from farmers in the field, so mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there's some thought to that program. Absolutely, and I can tell you I've been working with Kwantlen College in Richmond and they have a sustainable agriculture program and they have a farm school that's attached to, to their college and it's a wonderful mm -hmm. way of doing it. So uh, it, it almost works like an apprenticeship program, but it's on the ground training mm -hmm. of people who want to be involved in sustainable agriculture. It's an excellent model and actually uh, from that um, from that department at Kwantlen has come the idea of having a sustainable food system in BC and so we've been really mm -hmm. looking closely at the ideas that they have and it's it's very encouraging. One of the things that I am told non-stop and it's generally by um, people that may have been discouraged by the direction of agriculture over the last little while is that young people don't even want to get into farming anymore. I could not disagree more. I see a lot of young people who want to get into agriculture. Mm -hmm. They want to get into farming everywhere in BC, everywhere mm -hmm. that I go. But the only way that we can really make that happen is if agriculture is viable and people can make a living doing it. And so I think the policies that we're putting forward will help with that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any last words? I, I just wanted to say we, we mentioned that um, you know we're in the middle of the election and uh, I, uh, I, I said as I was coming in that it's a, it's a stressful election this time. I think it's quite um, negative. I'm getting attacked more than I, I did in 2009. And, you know, I've been so focused uh, working within the agricultural community, which is so supportive that it's a, a bit of a rude awakening <laughs> to be thrown into the, to the election like this. But uh, I'm really lucky that I've been given the opportunity to speak about agriculture every chance that, that there is one. and. Uh, you know, it's just been such an honor to be the agriculture critic for the fa past four years, and I really hope I can continue that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to go out and continue knocking on doors right after I leave this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for taking thank the you. time. I thank appreciate you. it. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the funniest things I get uh, on the doorstep, and it happens like many times in a day, is know how short you were. We thought you were tall. That's the main yeah. comment about yeah. me. Yeah. They say that about Mick Jagger too. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can say that.